Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Ellen Percival, and I am the publisher of Calgary's Child Magazine and the Partners for Safety Program Coordinator. I am honoured to kick things off on behalf of the Partners for Safety that are here today. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the Partners for Safety Program. It's a milestone we are very proud to celebrate today. For three decades, the Calgary Partners for Safety have patrolled the streets on Halloween night to keep young Calgarians safe while they trick or treat. The program's goals are to provide Halloween safety information for parents and children and to patrol communities with a very visible presence on Halloween night. The Partners for Safety include the Calgary Police Service, the Alberta Health Services EMS, Calgary Fire Department, Calgary Transit, and Calgary Community Standards, which includes bylaw and 911. Any child experiencing a problem on Halloween can approach any one of these partners for help. From 6 to 8 p.m. on Thursday, October 31st, our partner vehicles will be on Calgary streets providing high visibility assistance for families who are trick-or-treating this year. The Calgary Police Service, Alberta Health Services EMS, and the Calgary Fire Department will have units patrolling residential neighborhoods. Community fire stations will be open between emergency responses as a safe place for trick-or-treaters to ask for help. Calgary Transit buses and C-trains will also be available providing essential transit services. Trick-or-treaters can always approach any transit vehicle for assistance as operators can contact emergency personnel if needed. To commemorate this very special anniversary, we are so delighted to have Mayor Gondek with us today as an honoured guest to help us recognize this very special milestone. Thanks very much, Ellen. Oki, Dada Nastada, Ambawastich, and Tansa, everyone. Greetings to all of you in the mother languages of the Treaty 7 Indigenous peoples who stewarded these lands at the confluence of the Bow and Elbow Rivers for generations before many of us came to settle here and before we started celebrating Halloween here. Ellen, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here to help celebrate the 30th anniversary and what an incredible backdrop here at Heritage Park. For three decades, this incredible initiative has been a cornerstone to our city's commitment to the safety of our children and our families during Halloween. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to each organization that's involved, Calgary's Child Magazine, the Calgary Police Service, Emergency Medical Services, the Calgary Fire Department, Calgary Transit, and Calgary Community Standards. Your commitment to safety is what makes this program so successful each year. I'd also like to point out that because of the work that's been done over the decades, it's been critical in creating that community spirit and the sense of community pride that helped Calgary become a treat accessibly city, one where children with disabilities are given the opportunity to have an accessible place to trick or treat with their families. So really, you've inspired a lot of great work in our city. Your passion for Calgary's kids, Ellen, as well as their families is not only inspiring and clearly seen through Calgary's Child Magazine, it's a very big part of why people keep moving to our city and why they want to live here and grow their family tree here. So I want to thank you for being such an outstanding part of our city. We look forward to continuing this tradition of safety and community for many more years to come. Thank you again for having me. Congratulations on the 30th anniversary of this great initiative. And it's now my pleasure to invite Inspector Andy Woodward from the Calgary Police Service to speak to our first key topic, which is pedestrian and motorist safety. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Andy Woodward. I'm the Acting Inspector from the Traffic Unit here at Calgary Police. Um, for the young trick-or-treaters, um, I just want to give a little bit of a warning to say with your parents or a trusted adult on the evening for tomorrow evening's uh, trick-or-treating. For the older trick-or-treaters, um, I want you to say in smaller groups, but stay together. If you are at any time um, lost and you've got a cell phone with you, then obviously ring your parents and, and tell them where you are. If you change your plans at any time, then please ring them and let them know so they know exactly where you are. Um, no running across the road, so stop. And when we want to cross, make sure it's safe to cross at any time. Uh, no zigzagging, because that does cause problems to the motorists. And for the motorists out there, if you're driving around a neighborhood that is busy with children, please bear that in mind. 
drop your speed completely below the speed limit and keep your eyes open at all times. Um, with regards to the candy that's going to be handed out, parents, can you first check to make sure that candy is edible for them to make sure it's safe for them to eat? Um, I would like then to hand you on to uh, Ian, my partners from EMS, Adam. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is uh, Adam Loria. I'm a uh, public education officer with Alberta Health Services EMS. I'd like to share a few safety messages about costume and accessory safety for uh, trick-or-treaters. So ideally have children try, try on their costume before Halloween to make sure uh, that it all fits. That includes shoes, clothing, and all accessories uh, should be comfortable and not impede vision or the ability to uh, walk, especially when navigating uh, stairs. As mentioned, make sure that uh, costumes aren't too big or, or long to avoid tripping hazards. Uh, the costume should not uh, cover their ankles, uh, ideally. Uh, in addition, costumes uh, should be loose enough that it could be worn over uh, warm clothing. Try to avoid extremely dark costumes or costumes uh, which are uh, all black. Instead, try to choose costumes with bright colors. Uh, consider uh, adding reflective tape to apparel or accessories uh, so that you are a bit more visible to, to motorists specifically. And all costumes such as, or all costume accessories, sorry, such as sticks, uh, rods, wands, etc., should be soft and flexible with no sharp edges. Uh, and lastly, uh, make sure that any masks that uh, may cover uh, your eyes are properly fitted and do not uh, impair vision when navigating steps or, or uh, um, crossing the street. And whenever possible, consider switching from masks to a type of hypoallergenic makeup. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite my colleague from the Cal Calgary Fire Department, uh, Carol Hankey, to touch on homeowner and property safety. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. And I'm going to ask an assistant to come up here, our junior fire chief for this year, Kyrie, that's chief for everyone. Um, and he's going to share a message as soon as I'm done sharing a few here. So we want everyone to ensure that their sidewalks and porches and steps are well lit, makes it easier to see any tripping hazards, remove any obstacles like lawn ornaments or tools from your yards, place your Halloween decorations out of the way, but still visible because it's Halloween, but you wanna prevent any tripping hazards. Keep pets away from the front entrance. Not everyone loves dogs. I don't understand that, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and you never know how pets are gonna react to some of those scary costumes. Clear uh, walkways. Well, we don't anticipate any snow uh, <laughs> before tomorrow night. Oops, I just, sorry. Um, but should it snow, make sure it's all clear and there's no ice and consider handing out treats at sidewalk level if you have multiple stairs or a steep incline. And now, I would like you to share that one really important tip that we talked about. Go ahead. Candles. Use LED candles instead of real candles for pumpkins in case of, in case any, uh, if in case of any of the decorations get in the way of the fire. Excellent, excellent. Because a lot of the decorations are flammable and a lot of people have cool costumes that can easily catch on fire. Last year we had some folks that decided to have fire pits at the end of their driveways and then left them unattended. Huge fire risk, especially for those kiddos with the uh, cool costumes, which can be quite flammable. So. Uh, try and uh, not do that and have LED candles instead of real candles to minimize that fire risk. So that is about it. We do want to say a huge thank you to Heritage Park for allowing us to use this amazingly decorated space for this press conference and for the mayor for attending. Thank you so much. And everyone, please be safe out there for Halloween. <laughs>